Hello, friends. I want to thank you for joining us for our Lakeside Community Church worship service. And I know this is strange, it's different in that we are meeting in this way, but because of these, well, different times that we're living in right now, we're very thankful that we have such means as this to be able to connect and to be able to worship together. And therefore, as we are together now, let us remember that even though times are very, very different, they are uncertain, we don't know what the future holds, we know that we have a God who does know. We have a God who is sovereign over all things, and for whatever reason he is allowing these things to happen, we can have confidence and assurance that he knows what is best. And therefore, we do not place our trust on the circumstances that are happening. We don't have our feelings be dependent upon what happens. We know that we trust in a God who's in control. And therefore, during uncertain times like this, we know we can set anchor on our foundation of Jesus Christ. And therefore, as we enter into worship together right now, let's remember the sovereign God who is over all and through all and in all, and that this sovereign God is in control. And therefore, we further place our trust in him. And therefore, we are about to sing of our praise, our trust in God, of his sovereignty, of his um, authority. And so please join us and enjoy as we worship our God together and give him the praise that he so richly deserves. Creation. 
she sings your story At your name angels will bow The earth will rejoice Your people cry out Lord of all the earth We shout your name, shout your name Filling up the skies with endless praise Endless praise, Yahweh, Yahweh we love to shout your name, O oh Lord. There is no one like our God. We will praise you, praise you. There's no one like our God. We will sing, we will sing. There is no one like our God. We will praise you, praise you. There's no one like our God. We will sing, we will sing. There is no one like our God. We will praise you praise you Jesus you are God we will say Lord of all the earth we shout your name shout your name filling up the skies with endless praise endless praise Yahweh Yahweh we love to shout your name Hi, Tim. Thank you for letting us pray this morning for the service. Um, let's pray. Dear Lord, we um, come together this morning in a very unique way. Um, this is a time in our society that a lot of us have never had to experience before, mm. and we are feeling a lot of emotions. You do say, Lord, that there is a season for everything, and I just pray that you will help us to be mindful to um, feel all the feelings we're feeling, but also to come to you with those feelings. Mm -hmm. And Lord, I pray that you will allow us to have a time when we can just sit still for a while and not listen to all of the noise that is around us and be able to be still. Um, Lord, in Isaiah 41, 10, you tell us to not fear that you are with us. Do not be afraid for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold on to you with my righteous right hand. I pray, Lord, that you will again allow us to hold to your promises. Lord, with so much uncertainty, with so many questions, with so much fear that you will allow us to focus on the things that you want us to focus on. Mm. We want to focus, Lord, on what is true, mm -hmm. what is noble, what is pure, what is righteous. Thinking on these things, Lord, will help us to get through these times of uncertainty with your strength and your comfort and your timing. Mm. None of this is new to you. None of this is unexpected. And we pray that you will help us to hold fast to those things that you are helping us to learn through this very uncertain time. Mm. Lord, I thank you for your providence, Father, for your goodness too, Lord. Lord, the prince of the world is Satan, Father, and uh, he, has, he is trying to do a number um, on your people. Father, Lord, we pray for your protection. As we know, uh, you will always be there for us. Father, we pray that uh, you would be with our leadership in this country, that uh, they're taking the appropriate and right steps, Father. Lord, allow us to be servants too, Lord. Allow us to go forward with a servant's heart and be ready and available for your purposes, God. And um, Lord, I, I would like to also pray for our local governments as well, Father. They have a lot going on, uh, Father, a lot of information. Lord, I just pray that your hand would be upon all that, Lord, that you would um, just also remind us, 
Lord, that you have provided for every need that we would ever need. So as people rush off to the stores, Father, um, Lord, let us all be uh, together, Father, and, and just grab the stuff that we need, Father, and uh, not the stuff that we necessarily want, Lord, and allow us to be available uh, again for any purpose, any kingdom purpose, Father. Lord, our work schedules have changed, our school schedules have changed, Father. Lord, I, I just pray that as leaders of our households, Father, that our church is doing our part, Father, and uh, Lord, let us follow the rules and the guidelines that are set forth, but also prepare and, and do the things that we need to do, Father, and to help others. Father, that's what you call us to do. That's I, I pray, Lord, that the church mobilizes now, Father, and, and that we can we help those in need. So, Lord, be with your, your people today at home. Father, we love you. We thank you for all your goodness and uh, for the reminders, Father, every day of who you are. And, Lord, sometimes I think, uh, that these things happen so we can focus on you and focus on the things that really matter to us, Father, like our family, like people, like communication, Father. Lord, thank you for cell phones that we can communicate like this and that, uh, Lord, that you have provided those things. So we ask all these things in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Be blessed. is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone cornerstone weak made strong in the Savior's love through the storm He is Lord Lord of all When darkness seems to hide His face I rest on His unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. My anchor holds within the veil. Christ alone cornerstone weak made strong in the Savior's love through the storm He is Lord Lord of all He is Lord Lord The Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love through the storm. 
Stand before the throne. Good morning, Lakeside Community Church. Wow, uh, thank you so much for tuning in uh, this morning. You know, I, I, I just, I find myself in a very, very weird position. And, um, you know, we're gonna do the best we can based on our circumstances to, to, to give the best version of a worship service um, when there's no people actually in the sanctuary. And, um, I appreciate Tim, all the work that he's done, putting, putting in this service. Um, again, here I am. I am all by myself in the sanctuary. Um, I'm learning. I need people to preach to. Um, I just feel totally kind of lost here and almost like we're doing make-believe church. But anyway, um, I'm going to do the best that I can to present God's Word this morning. Uh, you know, I'll be honest with you, I, I, I ran through this message earlier, and I didn't like it. I, I just felt like I was a ro robot up here because I don't have people to preach to. So I'm going to kind of redo this, and I'm going to kind of shorten it a little bit because of how awkward it felt earlier. I felt like I went way too long, so let me do the best that I can to, um, to preach this morning and maybe do a shorter version. So if it looks like I'm out of sorts, if it looks like I'm pausing or don't even know where I'm at or what I'm talking about, like right now, I can't even get this thing turned on, um, you'll know it's because we're finding ourselves in kind of a weird place. but. I know you guys are good with it, and again, thank you for tuning in, and um, let's just trust the Lord in this, and thanks again for, for your patience. So what we've been focusing on is, you know, it's Lent season, and um, Easter is, is on the way, and so by the grace of God, we're focusing on Jesus is greater. And we looked at Hebrews uh, the first uh, Sunday, a couple of Sundays ago, focusing on how great and how awesome Jesus is. We looked at the first three verses. And then we looked last week how, how Jesus is greater than the angels. And when you're a part of the church, you've grown up in church, it's kind of a no-brainer. It's like, well, of course, of course, Jesus is the greatest, of course, Jesus is greater than the angels. But as I alluded to last week, there are a lot of people who don't know that. And they actually will focus more on angels than they, were, than they will on Jesus himself. But anyway, this morning we're going to look at Jesus is greater than Moses. Now Moses, to me, is like... A rock star. I love Moses. You know, he's one of my favorite characters in the Bible. You know, Moses was such a great leader. Um, the things that Moses had to deal with are just phenomenal. And, and when you read through the through Moses, when you read through 
uh, you know, the, 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 the whole situation with Israel and, 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 and how he led them out of Egypt and how he led them through the desert and all the way as he's getting close to the promised land, all the stuff that Moses had to deal with, you realize, man, this guy was awesome. This guy was such a, a powerful leader, great leader. But Jesus obviously was even greater than Moses. So what I want to do is I want to take a look at Hebrews 3, verses 1 through 19. You'll see that up on your screen. And let's do the best that we can to read it. And the reason why I say let's do the best that we can, it's kind of a long passage. Um, and this is actually kind of a, a, a part one, part two of, of, of our message this morning. But let, let's take a look. Let's take a look. So, Hebrews 3, verses 1 through 19. Therefore, holy brothers who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts on Jesus, the apostle and high priest whom we confess. He was faithful to the one who appointed him, just as Moses was faithful in all God's house. Jesus has been found worthy of greater honor than Moses, just as the builder of a house has greater honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but God is the builder of everything. Moses was faithful as a servant in all God's house, testifying to what would be said in the future. But Christ is faithful as a son over God's house, and we are his house. If we hold on to our courage and the hope of which we boast. So, and this is kind of where part two comes in. So, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion during the time of testing in the desert, where your fathers tested and tried me for 40 years, saw what I did. That is why I was angry with that generation. And I said, their hearts are always going astray. And they have not known my ways. So I declared an oath in my anger. They shall never enter my rest. See to it, brothers, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. But encourage one another daily as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. We have come to share in Christ if we hold firmly to the end the confidence we had at first. As, just, as has just been said, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion. Who were, who were, excuse me, who were they who heard and rebelled? Were they not all those Moses led out of Egypt? And with whom was he angry for 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose bodies fell in the desert? And to whom did God swear that they would never enter his rest, if not to those who disobeyed? So we see that they were not able to enter because of their unbelief. Will you bow your heads with me as we pray over this word? God, thank you so much for the opportunity to bring your word. And, and Lord, like I mentioned to our, 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 our good folks at Lakeside already, man, this is so awkward, God, um, to, be, to be preaching when no one's here is very, very strange. And, and, and I just pray, God, these are the circumstances, Lord, as you well know, that we find ourselves in. And we're just going to trust, God, that you're going to use this service to remind us we're still a church. And we're still a church that worships together. And even though we've been kind of throwing a curveball, so to speak, in, in our lives, in our world, God, we're going to be okay because you're a good God a loving God, you're still in control. And so will you just take this service so far, will you take this message and bless those who are listening right now 
And thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you're doing in our lives. Thank you for your powerful word in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So like I said, there's kind of like two parts to this message. And I'm just going to focus real quickly on the first part, basically in two areas. Okay? And the first part is the first beginning of what we just read, where we're supposed to focus our attention upon Jesus. Focus our attention upon Jesus. See, that means that our thoughts and our minds and our eyes are constantly on Jesus. That we are not to turn away, or, or that we are to turn away from things that are considered unclean in the world and focus completely on Him. Not living for the world, but living for God's kingdom. So we focus our attention upon Jesus. And isn't that appropriate based on what we're dealing with in our world today? You know, this, this, this coronavirus uh, has just kind of rocked our world, hasn't it? And so the thing that gets us moving or, 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 or helps us regain or maintain some perspective is the fact that we focus our attention on Jesus because he is in control and he is allowing this situation to happen for a reason. Therefore, we focus our lives on Jesus. Well, then Hebrews goes on to talk about how, how Jesus is faithful to, to God, even as Moses was faithful. And again, let me back up here for a moment. So I'm kind of going through this outline that you should maybe have um, downloaded or, or printed off or whatever. So if I'm going too fast, I apologize. Again, I'm just completely out of my element here, man. I'm just scrambling, I feel. But that's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll figure this out. So Jesus was faithful to God even as Moses was faithful. There are many cool things about Moses, you know, he was like, um, he was like this amazing leader for Israel and, and, and a great lawgiver, a great nation builder and all these things that we can talk about how awesome Moses is. But the best thing I like about Moses is what God says about Moses in Numbers 12 verses 6 and 8. Let me just kind of read this real quick. It says this. He says, listen to my words, God says. When a prophet of the Lord is among you, I reveal myself to him in visions. I speak to him in dreams, but this is not true of my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house. With him, I speak face to face, clearly and not in riddles. He sees the form of the Lord why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? So the backdrop to that is, is that Miriam, Moses' sister, was challenging Moses. And so she, as she's talking to Moses, kind of complaining to Moses about his leadership, God is overhearing this. And then God comes in the form of a cloud and he speaks to Miriam and he says these words and he's talking about, do you understand who Moses is to me? He is my friend. I speak to him face to face, not in riddles. I speak to him clearly. And God became very angry with Miriam. And what does he do? He, he turns her leprous. And that's a whole, you know, different story. But the idea here is that Moses is a friend of God. And that's what God wants with us. God, just, God doesn't just save us just to save us. He, he wants a special relationship with us. He wants, God wants us, or God wants to be our best friend. And I love that about God because that is so true. So we go on then that Jesus was the builder and the son of the house. And that Moses was only a resident and a servant. For it says here, 
For every house is built by someone, but God is the builder of everything. Now, the point that I want to emphasize here is really kind of like two main points of this first, of this first part is this. Remember, first we focused on, you know, our attention must be completely upon Jesus. The second thing I really want to emphasize here is this. It's because Jesus is building his house. Entrance into his house is conditional. It's conditional. How do we become members of God's house according to what Hebrews is talking about here? Well, it says here, by holding on to our courage and hope. Holding on to our courage, holding on to the confidence and the hope of salvation, our joy and the hope of salvation. See, it takes great courage today, doesn't it? It takes great courage and hope to make it through the storms of life without losing our faith. And one of the things I've been thinking about with this whole coronavirus thing is that there's been kind of this panic, right? A lot of people just going to the stores and taking this or taking that or whatever. And I'm wondering, are, 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 are people watching the church? Are people looking at Christians to see how are you, how are we as Christians handling this coronavirus epidemic. I hope they are seeing how courageous we are. I'm hoping that they see the hope that we have in Jesus, that we are not concerned, we are not panicking, that we know that everything is okay because we have great courage and hope because Jesus is the greatest and we focus our attention upon Jesus. Now I have a couple of scriptures here that kind of follow the outline. Let me just read them. Um, and again, I'm kind of out of my element here, so some of this stuff may not even flow like it normally would, because again, remember I said, man, I need you folks. <laughs> I need you in these pews because I feed off of you. And so preaching to like nobody here, I just feel really, really strange, but hey, whatever. Matthew 10, 22, all men will hate you because of me, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. Standing firm to the end, being courageous, hanging on to the hope that we have. Galatians 6, 9, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do so. We hang on to the, the hope that we have and, and, and we stay focused on Jesus. And when we do, we will be rewarded big time. So, jumping in here now to, to part two. Remember when I paused for a moment as I was reading scripture when I got to verse seven. That, this is where part two would start. Notice the beginning word in verse seven. So, Hebrews says, so, so because Jesus is greater than Moses, because Jesus is the greatest, there is a danger of unbelief or hardening your heart. It says, do not harden your hearts. See, this is a direct command from the Holy Spirit himself. That's what it says in our scriptures. And it's directed to every generation of believers. The Holy Spirit is still speaking today, and it's extremely dangerous not to listen and obey. I've been really trying to listen to God in this whole corona thing. Because the Holy Spirit is speaking, and I really hope I hope that, that many people will come into the kingdom of God because of this epidemic. I pray that people are trying to pay attention to what's really going on, that God is speaking to us. 
What does it mean? What do we learn from the Israelites in regards to a hardened heart? Well, we learn how through their wilderness experience that they developed hardened hearts. See, during that time, and it blows me away, it just blows me away, but we're the same way, we are the same way, of all the things that God did with Israel as he led them out of Egypt, as he led them through the desert, as he's trying to bring them to the promised land, all the things that blow me away is how they challenged God, how they complained, and how they grumbled. And what they did was they committed four crucial sins that I want to talk about here. And the first crucial sin that I see is they provoked God. They provoked him. A couple of stories in, in the Old Testament, a couple of situations where, where Israel got real thirsty, right? And so... Um, Instead of trusting God, instead of saying, whoa, did you see how God opened the Red Sea? Or, 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 or did you see how God uh, just led us through and we saw all the Egyptians die and all that stuff happening? You would think that, hey, God, we're thirsty. We know you can provide, so we'll wait upon you because you're a good God. No, they complained. They complained. And so what they did, they, 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 did, they, they, they disbelieved God. They, they, they thought, well, we, how can we trust in God? How do we know he's going to provide for us? And so they murmured and they grumbled against God and Moses. And they actually regretted ever leaving Egypt. So they provoked God, which you do not do. Do not provoke God. You don't want to do that. Not a good thing. The second thing they did is they tested God for 40 years, it talks about. And even though they didn't deserve God providing water or food or all the other things that they needed, they continued to harden their hearts and not believe in God's goodness and distrusted him. And they, what they wanted to do is they wanted God to prove himself time and time again. And you know what, man? We're the same way. We kind of do the same thing. And the third thing is they always want to stray. That God promised, he goes, God promises, look, I'm going to meet your needs. I'm going to provide for you. But they always figured that God would, that he didn't care or that he wasn't going to provide. So they always chose to go astray and they always disobeyed. Well, the fourth thing is this is they didn't know God's ways. They didn't know God's ways. And what are God's ways? God's way is always about faith. And it's always about trust. And that's what God wants. Like every father, every father wants, wants their children to trust them. It brings great joy and honor when your child, no matter how old they are, they just kind of, they just trust dad, you know? They trust their father, and that's what God wants as well. He wants his children to trust him. He doesn't want his children murmuring or grumbling or questioning. He wants them to trust him. And if we really believe in God, if we really believe how awesome he is, then we understand that the more that we struggle, the more we're going to draw near to him. The more that we're, we're going to want to just hang out with him, fellowship with him, trust him, depend on him, walk with him. And again, the, we're struggling. We're struggling through this whole coronavirus thing. And, and so may this cause us then to draw nearer to God because that's what he wants. But you see, that's what, that's what Israel failed to do. They had a great failure of unbelief and disobedience and the result then is they were judged by God and they chose not to follow him and therefore they were never able to 
That generation was never able to experience the promised land. And they all died in the wilderness. And God would, he would view the Israelites as a stiff-necked people. Look what Acts 7, 51 says. He says, you stiff-necked people with uncircumcised hearts and ears, you are just like your fathers. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Did you catch that? You will always resist the Holy Spirit. Don't we do that too? Don't we resist the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit who loves us. The Holy Spirit who wants the best for us. The Holy Spirit that wants us to have joy and peace and confidence. I don't want to be, cons I, don't want, I don't want to be known as a stiff-necked person. But that's what the Israelites were, were known as. God called them a stiff-necked people. And then in Romans 2, 5, it says, But because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of God's wrath when his righteous judgment will be revealed. Well, the second thing I want to focus on this part two of this message is that we must protect our hearts from unbelief. Here's what, look what Hebrews again says. See to it, brothers, that none of you has a sinful heart, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. Now, according to this verse, there is great danger that believers could possibly walk away from God. I struggle with that because I believe once you're truly saved, you are always saved. But let's think about what this verse is implying. Believers might do what Israel did. They might stop trusting, and they, may, they might stop obeying like the Israelites did. And look how we are like Israel, because we are. They failed to believe God, trust that he would do what he said he would do, and the great failure of people today is the very same thing. Unbelief. Unbelief. And people don't believe in God today and don't even comprehend what God wants to do in their lives. And God wants to do the very same thing he did with Israel. The only difference is our promised land is heaven. And so God, he wants us to follow him. He wants us to obey him, to be in love with him, because he's taken us to heaven, a place that is phenomenal. And that's what he was trying to do with the Israelites. He was taking them out of their bondage of slavery, bringing them, bringing them into a beautiful relationship with him. And he wanted to bring them into the promised land for them to enjoy. But... They were hardened in their hearts. And we can fall under that same thing. Well, then let's look at the last thing here that I want to focus on. What Hebrews is talking about. In order to protect ourselves from having a hardened heart, we need then to encourage one another daily. And believers are constantly exhorted, we're, we're constantly called to, to, to guard each other's heart from unbelief and sin. And there are many reasons or many ways that we do that, but let me just quickly, briefly focus on four. Here's how we are to encourage one another from having hardened hearts. And the first is this, we need to realize time is short. Time is short. Today is a day of salvation because tomorrow may never come. And life is like a vapor or like a flower. It's here today and is gone tomorrow. Look what James 4.14 says. Why, you don't even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. The second thing to keep us from 
having a hardened heart is that realizing a person's heart can be hardened because of sin. And sin, as we well know, is deceitful. It may look good, it may feel good, it may even taste good, but what sin does? Sin enslaves us. Sin leaves our hearts empty and lonely and insecure and, 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 and hurting and broken. Sin devastates families. It, 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 it devastates friends and, and, and it tears down businesses and, and ultimately it destroys ourselves. Ultimately, sin is what hardens a person. Proverbs 28, 14 says, Blessed is the man who always fears the Lord, but he who hardens his heart falls into trouble. Well, the third thing that we need to encourage one another from is remind ourselves and each other that each day is important. We must hear the voice of the Holy Spirit today and every day, and we cannot allow sin to deceive us and allow our hearts to become hard. And the last is this, is that judgment is sure. Judgment is sure. See, all who sin and disbelieve God shall be condemned and judged. And there's no escape for any of us who do not believe and follow Jesus. Last scripture that we want to focus on is Revelation 21 8. It says, But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters and all liars, their place will be in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. So what do we learn from this passage this morning as I wrap up this message? Well, we learn that Jesus is greater than Moses. We learn, and we, we know this, we know this, it's just a matter of we need to live it out is that Jesus is the greatest, period. And that we need to focus our complete attention on him with our present living situations, and our future depends on it. And we also learn that there is danger taking Jesus, who is the greatest of all time, for granted. See, and that sin leads to unbelief, and it leads also to a heart and a heart. We also learn that we can't be like the Israelites who provoked God, who tested him, who went, they, they, they went astray and then didn't even know God's ways. And lastly, we need to encourage one another daily because time is short and sin hardens our hearts and each day is important. And we don't, we don't, we don't want to be on the wrong side of God's judgment. So folks, that's it for today. And again, this is so awkward, so awkward. I really don't want to do this long time, long period of time. Um, it is kind of interesting, um, but I, I need you here. I need you in the sanctuary because I just completely feel out of my element. But you know what? We got through it. This was our first go around. We've never been through this before. Um, I, I hope the message sounded uh, like it made sense. Um, again, totally weird, but thank you for tuning in. And let's continue to trust Jesus. Hopefully, let's pray. Let's pray that God does amazing things through this, this coronavirus situation. Let's pray that it's temporary so that we can get back. To, to, to routine, but let us learn though. Let us learn. I think God is giving us a pause by changing things up in our lives. That when we come back, that we won't come back and just fall into another routine and take the, our church for granted, but that in this absence of not being able to be here in worship, 
that we'll be able to say, you know what? We've been taking God for granted. We've been taking our church for granted. We miss this, so let us come back stronger than ever. Let us come back with more passion and more fire for the Lord and that we will forget about what has gone by, we'll forget about the past and we'll focus on the future. Again, folks, thank you for your patience and um, thank you for letting me bring God's word. Let me just close in prayer. Father, thank you so much. As I mentioned already how awkward this feels, but there are a lot of churches where we're all going through the same thing where we just can't meet together. And um, many of our pastors are having to do the very same thing that I'm doing right now. And so um, thank you, Lord, that your church is strong. Thank you, Lord God, that we're gonna continue to move forward. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Jesus, that you indeed are the greatest and as we get closer and closer to, to Easter, Father, continue to prepare our hearts. Lord, that we won't take you for granted, that we will, we will focus, we will just focus on you in everything because you are an amazing God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God bless you, folks. Um, I hope you have a great day, and I hope to see you again next week. Amen. Soften my heart and break me apart. I need you to open my eyes to see that you're shaping my life. All I am, I surrender. Give me faith to trust what you say, that your good and your love is great. I'm broken inside, I give you my life. I need you. To soften my heart and break me apart, I need you. To pierce through the dark and cleanse every part of me. All I am, I surrender. Give me faith to trust what you say That your good and your love is great I'm broken inside, I give you my life I may be weak but your spirit strong in me my flesh may fail my God you never will I may be weak but your spirit strong in me my flesh may fail my God you never will give me faith to trust what you say that your good your love was great I'm broken inside I give you my life 
give me faith to trust what you say that your good and your love is great I'm broken inside I give you But your spirit's strong in me My flesh may fail My God, you never will I may be weak But your spirit's strong in me My flesh may fail My God, you never will I may be weak But your spirit's strong in me my flesh may fail my god you never will i may be weak but your spirit's strong in me my flesh may fail my god you never will We would like to thank you once again for joining us for our worship service today. Now, friends, we do not know why God is allowing these things to happen with this current pandemic. But we do know this because of our faith in him, our assurance that he is sovereign. He has his purposes and his reasons. And therefore, we can rest in that. So let's take this opportunity during this time, as we journey together through this, to grow in our faith, to slow down and to see the bigger picture as to what's going on around us and inside of us. May we not choose to harden our hearts because of the circumstances. People might think, well, why, why this? And Again, we need to understand that we don't allow those circumstances to determine our feelings or our choices. We who believe in the name of Jesus Christ know that he is sovereign, that he's in control, and that he knows what's best. And therefore, our hearts are softened instead. They're humbled because of the greatness of God, of these things happening beyond our control, and therefore we trust. We trust and so may we grow closer to God during this time and and maybe if these these services uh, in this way can help you we we invite you to continue to join us each and every Sunday as we offer up these services in this way through social media so we look forward to spending the time with you again next week have a blessed week May God bless you, and may you draw nearer to him during this time, nearer to your families. May God be praised through this all.